Hi guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't really been on YouTube late, lately, 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 um, and I'm already up hacking it up. Anyway, I just, no, I just had a break. So, I thought I'd read the news again, because I haven't done that in ages. You know, I thought of, like, all loads of stuff to do, because I thought, oh shit, I haven't done anything in ages. And I thought about doing a song on my guitar, which you can't see, but I'm gesturing at. Uh, but... I didn't. So I've got three stories here. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay. It's the news, the news. There's no ads or interviews. There's no better place on the YouTube to hear the funny news, dude. Right, so the first story is about something you'll all want to hear about, cereal box blunders. So basically, an Oregon company has ordered new packaging for its peace cereal, that sounds like a kind of hippie cereal, after a typo on the box uh, sent callers to a phone sex line instead of the cereal maker's 08, uh, 0800 number. What I reckon has happened here is so many people are getting pissed off by this hippie kind of all natural ingredients pea cereal that they were all phoning in to this 0800 number to complain and the guy that was answering it got really quite annoyed because he had so much work on his hands so he changed the number to a sex line to get the people back. Uh, instead of reaching Golden Temple of Oregon, uh, callers were greeted by a recorded voice asking, do you love sex? Isn't that why you called? I guess the whole do you like sex thing is kind of like an awkward formality, like when you're introduced to a friend or something, but I don't see why that needs to be on a sex line. You know, I mean, you're not going to be kind of dating the number. It's just kind of a weird thing to be on there. Right, now we've had the obligatory phone sex story, we can move on to the real serious stuff, you know? Um, okay, this one's about a Massachusetts youth coach um, called Michael Kinahan. He was coaching six to seven year olds uh, in a soccer team and he sent an email around to parents saying that uh, the team of six to seven year old girls would be known as Green Death and encouraged them to feed their da daughters undercooked red meat and said losing is for losers. Um, he said that he was joking uh, after he was he resigned from the team and the league official Chris Park said that he had a kind of a dry uh, wry sarcastic sense of humour that some of the parents might not have got the joke you know um, and I can kind of see that when he was saying losing is for losers he was kind of maybe being ironic and saying that you know don't take this too seriously and being sarcastic but green death just sounds kind of threatening to me you know I can see why some of the parents might get kind of um, annoyed at this. Uh, he also wrote that he would heckle referees and expected players to bleed a little. And if somebody was telling my six-year-old daughter that they, they would be expected to bleed, I think I'd be a bit panicked as well. And last is an animal story. For all you animal lovers out there, I thought I'd get one, although there was a funnier one that wasn't an animal one. Anyway, the story is about a green Guatemalan parrot called Gordo, who was kidnapped or birdnapped. Uh -huh -huh. That's just some of the kind of humour you can expect from a CBS news article, ladies and gentlemen. Somewhere around March 26th. Um, but uh, he uh, attracted people for over a decade uh, in the San Gabriel community of Baldwin Park. Um, and, well, the reason he, att he attracted so many visitors is because he was a skateboarding parrot, which kind of annoys me because this is an amazing bird, uh, an amazing pet that you don't really need to teach a trick. I mean, parrots just pick up stuff and you're teaching it to skateboard. If you see a picture, then it's not even really very impressive. The parrot doesn't really look like it's trying. You know, it's just got a little perch and it's just kind of standing on it. So I can see how that would get on somebody's nerves. My hypothesis is that um, 
there was a homeless guy who wasn't getting any attention because the parrot was right over there. But he just suddenly snapped and just snatched the parrot because he was not getting any attention. You know, because nobody was giving him any money. So they were all looking at the green parrot. That's what I'm thinking. That's not in the story. That's just me. Um, <laughs> uh, the owner, Fred Mirielles, who is 47 and still lives with his mother, I can see why he taught a parrot to skateboard, kind of, with that information, um, said the uh, parrot is like a kid to him. And he said the bird napper is up against a can of worms because Gordo isn't used to strangers and will start biting. I don't think biting will be much of a defence when the tramp snaps the parrot's neck. On that light note, animal lovers, you know, that was a story for you. Um, I'll see ya next time I make a video. I might be getting soon, along with my brother, a video camera to record things like, you know, more easily. So that'll be cool. And I might write a song. Somebody might come over in the holidays. It'll be good. I'll do some more videos soon. Okay, bye.